Hey, this is Jonathan. I just wanted to film this really short uh, case study video for you to show you uh, the, the type of things that we're doing uh, for this client uh, that we help uh, run the advertising for. And so that if you are running any type of business, right, and you acquire uh, customers online, I want to show and like share with you everything I know about online marketing and how you can kind of replicate uh, the same results um, that, that you can, that, that we did for, for this client, right? Because it's all about systems. It's all about um, structure, team, right? Uh, doing proper ads uh, properly and like doing it profitably as well. So knowing your metrics and knowing your numbers uh, very very important stuff okay so, so let me just uh, get right into it first show you exactly the type of results that we're going for and as well as uh, how you can replicate it and the methods and strategies to be very very transparent with you as well okay so uh, right here like, I'm just gonna refresh it one time just so that uh, you can see that, that there's nothing that I'm hiding or anything okay and you so, uh, know that the numbers are real as well okay so uh, it's refreshing right now and let me just uh, change the date okay so these are live sales by the way so um, it's just increasing it all the time okay so uh, for example, if I come from April uh, tw uh, 28th uh, all the way to like May 28th, right? Uh, we did a $800,000 month right here. And if you can see, right, we scale up to around what? Uh, $39,000 uh, per day, but then afterwards it dipped as well. So I'm going to kind of show you and explain to you why it dipped. And it's not because of marketing, it's because of like logistical issues and stuff. Okay. So like you've seen uh, the, the title at this point and... Uh, so uh, 57 days in 1 million. So like, I'm, not, I'm not kidding with you. So if I go to like uh, the 27 day, Right, that's a, a million dollars right there. So, uh, one million dollars in fifty-seven days, and you can see like the slope, right, in terms of uh, how much we scaled from like a uh, small two to three thousand dollar days uh, all the way to like forty thousand dollar days. Okay, so uh, I just want to show you um the stats behind it as well. Okay, so let me first explain to you uh why uh it went up all the way and then why it went down. Okay, so why it went up all the way is because like we're just scaling the ad spend and scaling the ads, right? So if you understand and uh know the metrics behind the business, right? You put in a dollar in how much your ROAS is coming out, right? You definitely understand uh, how fast you're going to scale, okay? The reason why it dips down is because um, when you scale too fast, right? And then logistics cannot handle, right? That's where uh, this comes in. So for example, right here, right? Uh, we're running ads on Facebook and Instagram. And so um, there is Facebook page score. What this is, is basically uh, when when people buy from your website, when uh, people buy from your website on Facebook, right? And then they will issue uh, basically a survey uh, to your customer saying, how was your customer service experience with this business right here, right? So in this case, like we were doing fine right here, 3.9 or whatever, and around 4.2, you can see, and May 6, right? On May 6, we're still trying to scale. On May 6, we're still trying to scale out the ad spend and stuff, but there's a bit of a delay. So uh, once the logistics uh, start, uh, cannot keep up, with the actual demand of the sales, right? Then the sales just dip all the way, okay? And when that happens, it also affects our ad spend as well, as well as affects um, uh, the reach uh, of the ads. So making our ads less profitable and decreasing the ROAS uh, as, as a result, okay? So you can see here, that's why uh, the sales are, in a sense, starting to slow down a bit and uh, that, that's kind of hurting our stuff, right? So um, the reason why is that is because, so let, let me show you like a, a bit of a macro perspective, right? Um, everyone starts from somewhere. And there's no such thing as, as a business who is like uh, churning out these levels over time, right? So keep in mind, you can grow very, very fast. And I think you'd be surprised with the numbers, okay? So for example, these, uh, this client that we worked with, right? Uh, we, we started working with them since October, 2019. And in September, uh, they were just a $5,000 business, $5,000 a month business. So can you imagine the, the, the growth scale right here? So in September, it was 5,000, right? And then the first month uh, working with us, right? Uh, we scaled it up to 94,000. Okay, so you can see 94,000. And if you just give me one more day, right? Um, you can see here, right? It's a $5,000 to $100,000 uh, per month right here. So you can see, yeah. So like, I want to give you a, another macro perspective where, okay, so like uh, there's the lockdown situation happening and stuff like that. And so if, um, when you look at it in the macro view, right? The reason why we were not able to scale at first, it's not because of our ads or whatever. It's because um, the, the, the stock was just stuck in some place in China and they're unable to actually bring it out of China. And so like um, my, my client was like, okay, we, we can't just let this, this thing happen uh, to the business, right? You can't just not sell and not try to scale just because there's this situation here. So um, in, in this sense, like um, we started scaling and decided to, to do so just because um, like, hey, the, 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 the stock is either gonna come at a later date anyway. So might as well scale now, uh, get the money first, get, get the cash first and get the sales first. And then afterwards, uh, think about fulfillment later as well. Okay. so. Um, that, that's kind of the, the, the background about the entire business and I hope this gives you an idea as well. Okay, so um, what happened between uh, like the April uh, April and May? Okay, so I'm going to show you a day by day, the ad spend and the breakdown as well. So uh, to give you a sensing of how fast we can scale. Okay, so 
I want to show you the back end first, which is the email marketing. So keep in mind, these are ads. Uh, we're going to pay traffic here. We're paying uh, for our message to be in front of people. And so we can scale aggressively. And that's something you can control. The back end is email. And basically, you can see here, right, uh, for the month, like $800,000, um, 16% of that revenue is driven by email. So $131,000 in sales right there. And that's pure profit, right? Uh, because you don't pay Facebook or Google a single cent to, to acquire these customers. So these are your most profitable customers. And um, yeah, basically, the, the email list is very, very uh, important to put as well okay so you can see here uh, we set up a few very very simple um, abandoned cart uh, sequences uh, welcome series the counting uh, for on, in the Clavio email marketing software and then we also sent a few really simple emails basically based on uh, the occasion and the holiday as well okay so like I'm not an expert email marketer by any sense but like you still can get these type of results uh, if you set up your flows and automations correctly and um, yeah that's basically the back end of the email all right so this is okay let's um, go on, uh, on what's it called on a day by day basis okay so for example uh, let me show you so for an on April 13, right, it was like 2,000, 2,000 in sales. So if I come in here, okay, so let me just refresh this for you so that you can see. Okay, so is it April 13? Yeah. So give me one second. So if I come in here and if I go to April 13 and I just update, right, on this day, you can see we started really, really slowly. Um, give me one second. Yes. Okay, can you see that? Yep. So we spent four hundred sixty-nine uh, dollars today to get around what two k in sales. Okay. So for example, uh, four to five day stretch. For example, the first, um, for example, the first fourteen thousand dollar day, which is an April nineteen, right? So on April nineteenth, um, you can see here, for example, April nineteenth, from four hundred sixty, we scaled up to one point one point nine. Okay, one point nine. So we're slowly and steadily uh, rising, right? Eighteen k day, twenty-four April twenty-four. So you can see April twenty-four. Right, 2.5, right? And then let's go up a bit. 24K day, May 3rd. Okay, May 3rd. May 3rd, that's 4K, right? And then it rises up all the way from like six to six to 8K. So all the way up, for example, at our peak, right? At $39,000 uh, per day, right? Uh, keep in mind, once you scale up, the ad spend, right? The ROAS will decrease. And that is a given because your messaging is not as targeted and uh, the ROAS is not as good, right? But uh, definitely, if you can keep profit into the business and keep your ads profitable, you are still going to run them nonetheless, okay? So $39,000 a day, and this is May 17, okay? So for example, on May 17, how much do we spend on this day right here? Okay, so we spend around seven, seven to $8,000 right here. So you can see a very healthy uh, four plus uh, ROAS and keeping the metrics uh, very, very consistent as well. Okay, what we are trying to do uh, every single time we increase the ad spend is to basically push out and duplicate uh, the lookalike audiences. So you want to launch new uh, lookalike audiences so that you can uh, get into a bigger reach, okay, right? So for example, uh, imagine I was in the perfume niche, right? And then there was like, a, okay, I can't think of something, something else. Okay, like um, fashion, right? Then you want to go into a different niche uh, such as, um, uh, perfumes, fragrances, right? So you basically tap onto a different audience and you expand the type of, of circle that you can advertise to. So for example, on the ad set level, right, you're targeting 3 million people, but in a sense, you're targeting another part of the 3 million people because Facebook only gives you a percentage of that 3 million people. Okay, uh, hopefully that, that uh, makes sense to you. And so by expanding your reach, you're constantly finding new customers uh, and leads into the business. And so you will never run out of people, right? So um, trying to be broad is better than ever, right? On the ad set level as well, uh, we do more than 1 million uh, in terms of the bro broad targeting. And so uh, that allows us to scale our budgets, right? So so if you can see here, right, uh, our budgets will never dip below like what a hundred dollars per day. You can see the campaigns that we're running, right? Anywhere is from more than a hundred dollars per day to like a thousand one one point seven five k per day. So um, very, I won't say it's high, very very high budgets, but it's like um, high budgets enough such that each campaign is, is uh, pulling significant amount of reach uh, to the each um let's go significant amount of reach yeah to, to 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 the campaign. Okay, so um people want to talk about like uh, CBO or whatever uh, CBO tactics and uh, media buying and stuff. And so CBO uh, yes we do use it and if you can see right here right uh, over this section right here um two hundred dollars to three hundred dollars anywhere below that right i won't use a cbo and the reason is because a cbo is distributed on uh the campaign level so the budget facebook optimizes right is to to segment and then distribute it based on the campaign level into the ad sets right so if there's not enough data on the ad set level then uh th there's not enough at the top right so i would generally for cbo you go and do ads uh ads budget optimization abo first and then on the testing phase and then you duplicate that into a cbo and so on the cbo you know exactly that's a winning ad set uh, all the time and so if there's any metrics that do uh, fall below that KPI, then you understand you can cut and kill. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. And CBO try to run high budgets, right? 
Uh, Facebook is very good at optimizing now. So uh, if you can push budget and data towards it, uh, it will go and find the correct customers for you. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so um, uh, apart from that, let's see what else I can tell you. Okay, so if you can see here, right, uh, according to my columns and stuff, um, this is my personal uh, favorite uh, arrangement of what the metrics look like and stuff. So if you want, you can just pause this video right now and you just copy me and stuff. But basically you can see link clicks, um, everything is pushing towards to the bottom of the funnel. So uh, everything, to, everything to the right, right? It's like I can see it at one point of view of like, okay, uh, increasing metrics to the purchase, right? So uh, outbound, outbound CPTR, uh, uh, ATC unit purchase, ATC uh, checkout, initial checkout, and then website purchase, and then afterwards is the ROAS, right? So every time I come in and look at the ads, right, all I see is I scroll to the right and then I see ROAS, right? That's all I care about, okay? The, the I think people are too inundated with the data where they see too many things at one time and they can't make a decision uh, based on that, right? Because um, all they see is too much data and then they, they, they in a sense, it clouds the judgment as well, okay? So another thing I want to kind of teach you is of how uh, we media buy is like, um, you can see here, right? All our campaigns, obviously, okay, uh, that's OXG, Tofu, OXG, Mofu, that kind of thing. It's segmented towards um, basically the temperature of the traffic. So the temperature of the traffic determines uh, the campaign name, right? So this is very important because if there are so many campaigns running at one time, it's really difficult to see what's working and what's not, right? So if we optimize for one metric, for example, okay, I, I uh, give a last 30 day span, okay? Can you see here that on the Tofu level, um, um, there is um, the top of the funnel, right? Top of the funnel means cold traffic, okay? And cold, uh, cold traffic, I can see it's $53 per purchase, okay? Another thing is tofu, 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 then bofu and mofu. So can you see here, mofu is warm traffic. Warm traffic is like page, page views, um, website visitors, uh, Facebook, Instagram engagers, people who watch your video, as well as bofu is your add to carts and initiate checkouts as well, okay? And probably a post purchase upsells, okay? And if you can see, right, um, on the mofu level, the cost per purchase is $25 and for the bofu is 17.1, right? On Tofu is 45, right? So it makes 100% sense that cold traffic is more expensive than warm traffic and warm traffic is more expensive uh, than than cold traffic, uh, than hot traffic, right? So it, uh, like this, right? You can really see from a perspective where it's very easy to optimize where, okay, if this mofu, which is the warm traffic is actually more expensive than the actual tofu, then it makes no sense whatsoever, right? So um, stuff like that is like uh, very, li very little things, but it also cuts down your workflow when you try to meet a buy uh, at the same time, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, yeah, so... Um, in terms of like how to vertical scale and horizontal scale as well. So if, if you realize, right, um, our our increasing scale is not really uh, consistent, right? So you can see like a thousand dollar day, three thousand dollar day, five thousand dollar day. It's not like um, we're plus 20% uh, every two days or so. Okay, so it's this one, if it's how fast you want to scale and how fast you can scale, right? So for us, it's like if I see the metrics from the macro perspective over like a three day span, for example, okay? So if I give it, okay, uh, put it performance for example 19 to 22 okay and then if i see the rest is extremely strong okay so i can see here right uh what 9.96 is what okay so 9. Uh, okay so uh, i'm just purely looking at the tofu level which is cold traffic right so cold traffic here is is a tree uh 2.85 um 3.06 um, 3.1, right? Anything above 3 is like, extremely strong already because um, even though it reports on Facebook, it's a 3, right? On Shopify and on your actual conversions, it's probably a 4, okay? That's um, different ad accounts have different behaviors, so uh, just keep that in mind, okay? Um, this one, you gotta have to fill it out as the ad buyer, and so I, I can't really tell you for, for this for this specific one, okay? That's how, kind of how I see the metrics, and then if that is very, very strong, right? You can just duplicate that. Just duplicate and increase the budget, right? Increase the budget and vert vertical scale uh, as hard as possible, okay? Um, even though you want a vertical scale, right? Do you realize we have different campaigns uh, running at different budgets as well? That's because you kind of want to spread out the risk of your load here and you don't really want to um, uh, put all your eggs in one basket, right? Uh, one campaign is driving the entire entire thing, right? So uh, having multiple uh, different um, assets per on horizontal scale allows you to spread out the load so that your conversions, right? Uh, um, don't just die with one campaign. Hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? Um, let's see another thing that I can kind of show you and tell you about. Okay, so um, another thing I want to tell you is um, if you're running cold traffic, right? You need, um, and you can scale at this type of level, right? You can scale at like uh, very, very fast. Um, the reason why you can do this is because at the top of the funnel, which is cold traffic, it needs to be profitable already, right? So um, our, our KPI or minimum KPI, right? Is that minimum, it has to be a two times ROAS on cold traffic. And the reason why is that is because uh, we can scale very hard, very fast, and we are know for certainty, certainty that um, on warm traffic is gonna be extremely profitable, extremely profitable, okay? So on cold traffic, you get your, in a sense, get your shit so sorted, <laughs> and then uh, on warm traffic, you know you're just gonna kill everybody in the game, okay? So another thing that you can kind of use is as well as automated rules. So for example, in automated rules here, you can go into manage rules, and if you see um, this account particularly, 
particularly uh, previously we were using automated rules but now we aren't and the reason why is because it's very hard to manage uh, that when uh, Facebook doesn't work itself okay so even though we try to turn it on the automated rules sometimes it does not trigger and it's very very difficult to manage as well however if you do still want to try it out and it actually works on your account right you can um, you stop right here and then you can go and see yourself um, you can try different things right so for example how we do is like um, if the ROAS is more than 2.5 you add the budget by plus 20 percent increase the daily budget by uh, plus th uh, okay it's 30 percent okay can, can you see here then if there's there are stop loss rules for example like um if royce is less than 1.8 right then you spend more than 40 so that a statistical uh, significance to your data right then you decrease uh, sorry then you turn off your ad sets as well uh yeah ad sets this one is turn off ads as well right so there are multiple layers where you can stop loss and you can uh, risk manage in a sense so you're not spending as much as well okay so um hopefully this gives you an idea of the automated rules section and um yeah Okay, so um, apart from that, let, let's see uh, what, what else I can teach you. Okay, yes, so uh, like I said before, every time you optimize uh, for ROAS and stuff, always look at the most bottom of the funnel metric, right? So don't, um, there's a lot of data that's coming. You see cost per click, uh, click through rates, whatever, whatever. Okay, don't worry about that if there is purchase. If there's purchase, if there's lead come through, uh, don't worry about the rest of the metrics. If, if the purchase ROAS, it looks good, it looks good. It doesn't matter uh, what are the other uh, metrics in the game, okay? So, um, yes, uh, apart from that, I think <laughs> I've covered uh, pretty much everything. But, okay, there, there's, I guess, one, one more thing that I should say is like, um, even though um, you, you're, you're running ads, right, um, all you look is data. Keep in mind, you are selling to human beings, right? Human beings uh, are behind the screen. Uh, if you see here, right, a bit insane, uh, our reach, okay, from just from April alone, April alone to May. Um, okay, overall rest, by the way, uh, I think it's like 4.6. It's 4.6, okay. Uh, I, I think it's a bit more than that. Uh, okay, so spend spend two hundred twenty thousand over uh, over a million dollars in sales. So over four times. Okay, four four times. Okay, and then um, if you can see, um, what's that called? Uh, yes, uh, cost of purchase. Yes. Oh, for for in terms of the reach, right? It reached over ten million people, which means that they are like. 10 plus million people who have seen our ads but have not bought from us, right? So the, the warm traffic bucket is is massive. When we want to do retargeting, we can do just push it through the moon basically as well, okay? Uh, yes, okay? Um, yep, I think that's pretty much it about the ad side. Yes, uh, the human being things. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yes, you're selling to human beings and keep in mind like, um, even though you're pushing um, ads and data, you keep seeing everything here, right? Um, you are selling to people, people trust people, and you got to optimize the funnel. Uh, page speed optimization, um, uh, page speed optimization, plugins, uh, increasing average order value, uh, funnel optimization, um, everything from the creative, the video creative needs to be en entertaining and engaging and stuff. And uh, okay, let's see. Uh, yes, copywriting as well. Copywriting is extremely important. Call out the target audience, ensure uh, that people know and understand your ad and stuff. Okay, so if you do not call out the target audience, you're, you're basically wasting clicks at, the, at, the, at that point in time because not everybody is a buyer as well. Okay, um, I prepared a very short PowerPoint here as well. So I'm going to show you the metrics behind the business so that you can uh, see the entire thing. Okay, so what we actually did was in terms of marketing channels, right? There is Facebook and Instagram. And then we also did some email marketing as well. So you saw the email marketing there. Okay, um, the entire funnel is like this. It's nothing secret. So I just want to share it with you. So you can see here, right? Hopefully I zoom in a bit. Okay, can you see? Um, it was like product page and then a product page to the checkout and to the purchase. So very standard e-commerce funnel, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, the traffic source. Okay, there's push notifications as well as SMS list over here. And then there's email pop-up website. Okay, so um, there's a pop-up and then like uh, give a discount code and then we'll send them a bunch of emails afterwards and then ask them to buy on the product page afterwards. So send traffic back to the site. Okay, on the checkout part, there's abandoned, uh, abandoned cut checkout sequence. And then after here, uh, there's introduced the new product, which is basically looping back to increase the lifetime value of the customer. So you can upsell them different things as well. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically pretty much it for the funnel. And uh, as you can see, right, it's like um, once you understand how the entire macro thing and the perspective works, right, you understand what levers you can pull to really grow the business fast. Okay, uh, let me show you the entire um, uh, thing here as well. So um, just to prove to you, okay, revenue generated is 1.6 mil. And if you can see from the time we uh, work with them. Okay, so um, give me one second. So from all the way from October, all the way from October is around uh, 1.6, 1.6 mil. Okay, and then on ad spend wise, uh, okay, 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 and then on ad spend wise, you can see, um, okay, twelve, okay, three hundred fifty-five k, yeah, three hundred fifty-five k sales, okay, so okay, it's a bit adjusted uh, from here, right? So um, yeah, 
because uh, I, I edited this slide just now as well. Okay, so um, then the product costs around 37%. So definitely should drop that down uh, in the future if you want to uh, pull more money out of the business. Uh, software cost is 3K, net profit is around 600, 670K, right? ROI is, uh, in terms of uh, ROAS is 4.6, right? And the net margin is 41% as well. Okay, and then uh, I think like uh, we did our job well for in terms of like uh, doing the marketing and stuff. Uh, but in the future as well, definitely want to try to increase, uh, reduce that product cost, right? So you can uh, have have more profit into the business. And because like you are um, basically moving volume, tons of volume already through your supplier, right? So you should have some sort of leverage to ask them to, hey, can we reduce product cost as well? As in the future, right? We want to introduce more email marketing, uh, build out the flows even better, as well as do Google Ads. Okay, so Google Ads, like I think YouTube Ads is a big blue ocean right now. There's a lot of uh, traffic right there. That's a lot, very few advertisers are there as well. So we're gonna try to tackle that market as well. Okay, so um, hopefully um, you've enjoyed this case study and stuff. And if you have really any questions, right, please do and put them down in the comment section below. Uh, I will try to generally answer uh, any of them. Um, yeah, and please, I, I guess uh, I'm just gonna ask you now, uh, like the video and subscribe uh, to the channel if you want and stuff, okay? Um, Yes, if you want to work with my agency, you can go to oxg-media.com uh, slash application slash form. Okay, I'll put the website uh, link below as well if you want to check it out. And yeah, okay, so uh, that's basically pretty much it. Um, I hope you really take this information uh, with you and so that you can really use it for yourself because um, like I've, I've, I've spent a ton of time <laughs> in, in, in Facebook ads and learning all this and stuff. And so uh, I want to give it to, to you for free so that you understand like what, what it takes to actually get, get to this level. And yeah, okay. So um, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it for yourself. And yep, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, yeah, okay. See you soon.